Ja, ja, så farvel. Hej. Ahoy there. Come on in. Grab a comfy chair. Do you like my nautical greeting? Actually, I was trying to please the spirit of Alexander Graham Bell, who thought ahoy, or even ahoy hoy, was the correct way to answer the telephone. As he is credited with inventing the thing, you'd think he got to choose, but Thomas Edison disagreed and suggested hello, and for reasons I can't establish, Edison won. Back in 1878, the very first phone book ever published by the District Telephone Company of New Haven, Connecticut, told all 50 of its users to begin their conversations with a firm and cheery hello, spelt H-U-L-L-O-A. I have no idea if the extra A was silent. Anyway, hello, helloa, or ahoy. At the moment, my life entirely revolves around the wretched phone. I record these talks on it, keep in touch with my kids, play the odd game, and even look things up. I don't really like using it, and when I'm not filming, I conceal the damn thing inside a cover which makes it look like a book. But nevertheless, without my asking, the wretched device told me this morning that I am averaging six and a half hours of screen time a day, which seems absurd. I mean, rather like our political leaders, I am unaware of even having cogent thought for that many hours a day. The phone was invented in 1876. It has taken us 144 years to reach the stage where the average Westerner will spend one year of their life on the phone. The British, I have to say, were reluctant users when it was first invented. When it was first mooted here, the post office chief engineer felt it would be of little practical value. The Americans have need of the telephone, but we do not. We have plenty of messenger boys. Actually, I like the idea of messenger boys. How pleasing in these isolated times if some slight fellow in a pillbox hat would turn up at the front door with a small scented letter. I'd even like to go back to the days when the bulk of phone communication happened through an operator, almost inevitably female, which reminded me that I have this. This old phone was the kind my parents had in their holiday home in the rural part of Denmark where I hail from. It was exactly like this because this one actually comes from the inn which lay up the road. There were nine identical phones in the village, each given a single digit phone number. I think we were number five, but the only number you needed to know was seven, which was the inn. If dad wasn't home or fishing, that's where he'd be. If you wanted to ring, then you turned the handle at the side, and after a while, sometimes quite a long while, the woman, who also ran the only shop, would answer. You'd say, number seven, please, and she'd either tell you dad wasn't there or put you through. She knew absolutely everything about everyone because she listened in on every call. You could hear her breathing. If you wanted to speak to someone in Copenhagen, well, that might take all day as you needed to book a line, so hardly anyone ever bothered. This was the early 1960s. There were no mobile phones because phones of any kind weighed a ton. My British grandparents had a rather more modern phone with a dial and everything, but in those days the phone and its use was considered an expensive item, so the device was placed with great care on a special shelf in the front hall. If anyone wanted to make a call, they could be reminded of the immense cost by standing beside it next to the draft from the front door. The very first telephones had to be physically connected to each other by a wire. This became a logistical nightmare and soon telephone exchanges developed where connections were made manually by what became known as hello girls. A call would come in and a woman sitting at a complicated board of wires, lights and sockets would connect them to the person they were trying to reach. It was a really important part of women entering the workplace in the first half of the 19th century. Initially, in both Britain and America, switchboard operators were male. It may surprise you to learn that some of the boys were not best suited to the job. They lacked patience, occasionally used bad language, and were not above fooling about instead of getting people connected. It was said to be Alexander Graham Bell himself who came up with the solution. Why not be radical and hire women to answer the phone and put people through? He engaged a woman named Emma Nutt, who in 1878 became the world's first female telephone operator. In Britain, it was a woman called Bella Sinclair in the Orkneys. On both sides of the Atlantic, it was soon discovered that callers preferred female operators. They were calmer, and here's the really big plus point, cheaper. 
For a lot of women, the work was nicer than any kind of manual labour. By the end of the 1880s, the job had become an exclusively female occupation. And not that the work was easy. Just to get the job, a woman had to pass height, weight and arm length tests to make sure she could fit in the tight quarters where operators were expected to sit for eight hours a day in straight back chairs for low pay. Of course, we don't have such exchanges now. They're computerised. And that is because of Dr. Erna Schneider Hoover, who was born on June the 19th, 1926. Erna's an American mathematician who affected our daily lives, but whose name may not reverberate with recognition the way Alexander Graham Bell's does. When she was growing up, the idea that a young woman might make her way in the world of science was not a popular one. But she is said to have read a biography of Marie Curie, which encouraged her on. In 1951, she earned her PhD from Yale University in philosophy and the foundations of mathematics and got a job at Bell Labs, which had been founded to research all aspects related to the recording and transmission of sound. When Erna joined, computer technology was in its infancy. Also in its infancy was Erna's second child. It was while recovering from childbirth that she began pondering what was then a current com communication problem. Telephone exchanges had developed and now electronic relays were doing the work of the old operators. The problem was more and more people had phones and sometimes a call centre would be inundated with thousands of calls in a short amount of time. This would overwhelm the electronic relays and cause the entire system to freeze up. Erna saw it as a logic problem and she came up with a system whereby a computer could use data about incoming calls to impose order on the whole system. It was a whole new way of handling calls and became known as stored program control. I genuinely don't understand it, but it was so important that the lawyers for Bell Labs handling the patent went to her house while she was still on maternity leave so she could sign the necessary papers. Erna explained about her invention. Basically, she said it was designed to keep the machine from throwing up its hands and going berserk. This seems a marvellous female attitude and the principles of her invention are what we still use today. Erna revolutionised modern communication and because of her, we have all been able to carry on chatting even while everyone has been stuck at home. Studies of the use of the phone have shown it does seem to be used differently if you're a boy or a girl. I mean, anecdotally, I think many of us probably feel that is true. How many people have had the experience of phoning home? Dad answers, you say, how are you? He says, I'm fine. Do you want to talk to your mother? When the phone was first marketed, it was seen as a business tool for men to make deals and promote their products and services. What we now know is that it became a lifeline for so many women, especially in isolated communities, who were helped to sustain social relations and even keep their sanity. I am grateful to Erna and all the women who ever put a call through. Uh, please don't think that I don't keep up, though. Uh, this is my latest phone. This is called a light phone. All it does is make and receive calls, which is just like the old phone, but easier to lose. Honestly, not everything is an improvement. The 1878 phone book, which recommended Hello to begin a chat, suggested one should finish a conversation with the phrase, that is all. Uh, before I go, if you can, ring someone you haven't spoken to for a while. You might save their sanity, or even better, send the messenger boy. Take care, be kind. That is all. <coughs> Deb, Deb, the old phone's ringing. Let, can I answer it? Just... Hello? No, I have not recently been in an accident which was not my fault. I'm very clumsy. I think it's always my fault. That was weird. Vox Talks is now available in podcast form. Check the description below for links to listen and subscribe. <laughs>